In this video, we're going to continue on with the point of sale system in JavaScript, and this is part nine. So what we had, or where we left off previously in the previous video, was we had some issues with the dot here. So as you can see, we click on this, and then we say point, and then we do this. Oh, that one works fine, but if we would say here, we get this, and this of course doesn't make any sense. So what we want to do is we want to fine tune this a little bit more. So we're going to focus on this part because I realize that there are some, there will be probably more interactions and we still need to fine tune this one as well. And we need to have a, another button later on. So what I'm going to do here, let's go down here. We scroll down all to the bottom or at least where we have the item related to the calculator. And that's this one here. So what we're going to do here, first one is to solve the dot. To solve the dot, what we need to do here is basically analyze here the inclusion. Meaning here, what we want to do is, let's refresh this basically, and then if we select here this, and what it should understand is that the moment we click on this, first of all, that should be a dot zero. That would not make any sense right here is a dot only. And we need to block as well the multiple dots because there should be only one dot visible. So let's do that one right now. So in here, what we're going to do is the following here. We're going to continue on here with the if else. And I realize that this if else can be quite complicated. We can eventually refactor it, but I would say for now, just create a working model. Refactoring or perfecting the code can always be done after you have the IT or the website done. So no, no, no need to, to uh, spend too much time on this for now. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, let's make here a item and let's say here else if, and then we have this one here. All right. So what we're going to do in here, well, we have to put in this here, but we also need to put in here the item. So let's look at it. So what are we going to do here? What we want to do here is we want to analyze if there would be another dot in here. If there is another dot, we should, or if there's already a dot, the moment you click on this, it should not trigger anything at all. So we're going to say here, we're going to grab this calculator screen amount because we want to know, first of all, what is in there. And then we say here, we say a dot includes, and then we indicate what we want to analyze. Well, we are going to analyze in this case, if there's any dot, if there's already a dot in here, we should not be able to click again on dot or at least we should not see another dot. We should not have that function here. So if this is the case, and then we say if this equals true and the number, and if you're wondering what is the number, that's this one here, and the number, which is basically what you press on the button, would be equal to string dot. All right. So once we have this, that would indicate that we want to do something specifically here and what we will do is basically will not we will do nothing so that would mean that we say this item here will be equal to this all right so this would mean that we don't have any adjustment in here so now we have this here we have this done let's put this nicely back here oh and then save that if I refresh now, let me check as well if this is correct. So I say one dot, one dot, and now you can see the dot doesn't respond anymore. Beautiful. So that's the first issue that we have solved. Another one that I would like to solve is this one here. If I refresh this or this, clear this, and if I press in this, and I say dot, all right, and then do zero, you can see what is happening here. Doesn't make a, uh, sense as well. First of all, uh, we have this here, we might want to have a dot zero, that might be, but I think here, should we go down here to point or one or 0, 0.01 or something like that, how many cents do we need to go down? I guess we can ignore that for now, not that important here. However, one thing would be probably more logical is, if you would start with a zero, you might want to say 0 0.99. So would it not make any sense to have, if you anyway select zero, that it will be a dot as well? Because the first value is a zero, maybe you want to have something smaller than one dollar. So that is a very logical item here. So we can solve that as well. Or at least let's look at this. 
So if number equals zero here, uh, we select this, we can just say this one here, just fine tune, we say, if it's equals nothing blank, we can put in here dot. And that's that one. If I save this, this will most likely respond correctly for the double dot. But what about this one here? All right, that one doesn't work. But if we do this, clear this, do this, it doesn't respond here as well. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, we can say amount equals this and the number is zero, zero. All right. Then if number equals that is true, we have that one blocked already. Let's see where is the core issue. All right, that's probably this one here. So I'm going to remove this here. I just put it here. We say here, if equals zero, the number and this is zero, zero, well, I'll just put it here dot, first of all. Next one here, zero, if the zero is and the number equals zero, I'll just put this on dot as well. And here, if it's blank, I guess they should respond. But let's see. Refresh here. Let's see with the other step, just to make sure. If I click on this, there's a dot, all right? Cancel this. If I press on that, there's a dot as well. Cancel that. So if I have this one here, all right, we're missing here. You can see here, this should be as well, zero. If this is blank, it's the only value here, zero. As you can see here, all right? That needs to be solved as well. So what we're going to do here is very simple. I guess we could do this independently without the without nesting it in another if or else if so we can just do it here if then we say here if the calculator screen amount let me grab this then we say here equals to string dot if it's just only a dot and then we can say here well let's see if this is really correct if it's equal to dot and we have here the calculator screen amount equals and let's see if i do this correctly here should be equal to this so if this is that if it's only a dot it should be converted into a zero point which would make sense here so let me double check if this really works as i expect click on that press on this and then if i say here dot there you are so basically what we did now is that when we put in here if it's blank if we do one dot there should be no issue here you can see However, if you want to say dot 99, would make sense. And if we do 0, 99, we have this as well. And that would make much sense because when you have a 0 here at the beginning, it probably means that you want to have a sense or you want to indicate how many cents. All right. So we have this here. Let's double check. Do I have everything so far working regarding to all our issues here? There you are. All right. So that one here. Can see here this really blocks it i guess there would be not something with zero one cents i don't know what a shop what shop would sell something with for that low value this here might eventually be blocked but that's all right for now so i want to cancel this here i want to make sure that our default works all right that works fine if i do this dot one point one or one point zero one that's fine as well this one one all right this all right, so I accept this for now. So this is basically first one. Next one is eventually what I want to do here is the following: create a uh, exact amount button, and the exact amount button would be directly match with the amount we have here. So for example, eventually when we have this checkout here, or when we have the order, click on that, and we say checkout, and that this still needs to be made. We have this amount here. Sometimes the customer might pay the exact amount immediately instead of selecting 5.99 or here, whatever we want to select, this still needs to be done. We should have the exact amount. So that's what we're going to do, and, and that will be in the next video that we're going to start working on that.